Five thirty on the dot. Well, oh, hi, Joe. Uh, so I called to order at uh, five thirty. Looks like everybody's here. So, um, sorry, my screen's playing up. So, okay, yep. Yeah. Um, is there any public participation? Can someone help me? I can't see anyone. Does anybody like to speak? Is anybody on? Yeah. Hey, everyone. Oh. It's Melissa. Hi, hi Happy Melissa. New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Um, I just wanted to mention just one thing as we start to uh, work with uh, restaurants and businesses this year, um, shifting away from styrofoam and, and the other um, plastic reduction that um, we should urge them to uh, to choose uh, the plant-based and the paper-based containers and not the black plastic containers, which a lot of them are using right now because I recently learned that black plastic is not recyclable um, due to the way that the machines sort plastics. So it's just one thing to keep in mind and to um, hopefully uh, get the restaurants to shy away from using black plastic. It's actually a new invention. This is Carol. That just uh, allows... Melissa and Carol, can you just for the, we have to, for the record state your address? Right. Oh, thank you, Tom. Yeah, mine's uh, 3 Fairmount Ave. Carol at 294 Main. Carol, um, Melissa, a... did you finish saying what you'd like to say? Oh, yeah. Okay. Carol, would you like to say something? Yeah, on the black plastic, there is a new invention that will be able to um, detect it. So um, that, that should be a, a fluid rule, if that makes sense. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thanks. Thanks for that. Um, can you? Oh, uh, yeah, you put yourself on mute. Okay, great. Um, so. I don't see anybody else on public participation. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, moving on then to approval of the minutes. So I have three sets of minutes for approval. So I have received edits to one of them. So if someone makes a motion, there is one sentence to be edited on the November 2nd uh, meeting notes in reference to the gas and light boards vote. I'll make a motion. There's Myra. So you're making I'll a motion for all three. Are, are we doing all three at once or one at a time? I think there's only one amendment for one, unless anybody else has any amendments. I had just a, a name clarification on... Um, Looks like you don't have Robert's last name on the 12th, November 12th minutes. If he doesn't say a last name or I don't catch it, I don't write it for fear of writing oh, okay. his wrong name. <laughs> okay. Um, I can give it to you if you want. Okay. Um, it's V O G T L I. Okay. Which uh, meaning notes is that? That was the uh, 12th of November. Okay, thank you. Uh, did we, who, have we gotten a second for the? I seconded it. Okay. So do we add in the discussion of um, Tom's amendment to um no uh when was it november 2nd one Correct. Yep. find it do you have that in front of you i do um, so the his news update will read that the wmgl board in 2015 entered voted to enter into a contract with mmwec to develop a dual fuel plant in peabody in response to the capacity demand obligations and I previously had 
written it was about stabilized pricing, so I had misunderstood. Robin, on, and I realize I mean, um, do we want to just define what um, MWEC is in terms of? Uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put that in chat. Just it, I refer to it as MWEC, but I realize um, I use acronyms all the time. So we had a motion and a second. So then do we, what do we do have to do for the amendments? Um, we just approve it with, as noted. As and, noted yeah, as, as discussed you. and amended. So as discussed, um, roll call for approval of the October 19th, uh, November 2nd and November 12th minutes with the amendments for the gas and light on October 2nd Oh, sorry, November 2nd and the name change on November 12th. Uh, and where's my pitch? Uh, Tom? Aye. Aye. Julie? Yes. Mary? Yes. Robin? Aye. Joe? I'm going to abstain. Okay. Thank you. Um, Myra? Yes. Thank you. And Susie's here. Susie, Susie. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, Susie. That's okay. Go on the next page. Hi, Susie. That was a couple minutes later, late. Hi. <laughs> oh, yes. You. Thank you. I didn't see on the screen. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, item four on the agenda um, student liaisons. Um, so I sent out th three applications, and I, I actually just received. Addies as well. Um, I, have, I unfortunately I haven't had had a chance to. I literally got it ten minutes ago, so I haven't been able to upload it to everyone. Um, so I don't know if everybody's got any comments on that. Uh, the last time we did this, we actually appointed all four. Um, so if anybody has any objections, I'm just going to vote on. Um, taking all four on again for the committee for 2021. I think I, we, that, if, I was going to say because we know Addy, um, I don't feel like it's an issue that we didn't see the paperwork ahead thank, of time. That was the other comment I was going to, yes, thank you. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I was going to say, I thought the two new people that, that didn't apply last year but did apply this year were really interesting. I feel like they both in their letters or their Statements both showed a lot of sort of community commitment, which I thought was great, and also sort of different perspectives on on why they were interested in this. Uh, you know, so one one person really focused on the lake and sort of spaces where they're where they spend outside, um, and another person really focused on sort of really commitment to community. So I thought it was really an, it's an interesting mix. It's a different mix than last year. Um, yeah, they had some good cover letters, and yeah, they were definitely interesting. Um, so I think Sophie, we to... Sophie and Addie were talking about you. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I, just oh, I thought the meeting was at seven. So I'm... oh, sorry. We yeah, we kind of changed this one. It's okay. Hey, thanks for thanks for making it. Thank you. I um, have to leave at six. Is that okay? That's okay. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No worries. So. Um, I don't want to do this. So I just need a motion to approve Abigail, Nick, Eddie, no, no, I read, I read and Sophie. Um, Second. So, so motion to accept all four. Can I get a second? Yeah. Thank you. All, right. all in favor, um, Julie? Yes, yes. Thank you, Mary? Yes. Robin? Yes. Joe? Yes. Myra? Yes. Susie? Yes. And yes. You forgot to as well. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, for some reason, I, there's so many people on this time. I don't have everybody on my screen. I'm sorry, okay. Tom. <laughs> Nothing personal. No worries. Thanks, Tom. All right. Excellent. So, um, so I'll reply to the town and um, they'll send out the information to everyone. I know Addie and Susie or uh, Sophie are already on, so 
um, they already right. know. Welcome aboard <laughs> again. <laughs> yeah. So that's great. Um, other pending business. Can I ask one question about the Rob? I don't know if it's yeah. to the agenda. I'm just wondering if Sophie and Addie either have thoughts of things that they might want since they're on that they might want to do differently or ways that we could make uh, this experience as a student liaison um, the, the most sort of helpful and fruitful that you all were our first group um, as we were just forming. And so I'm just wondering if, if you had thoughts on that we should hear or, or talk about. Am I allowed to do that, Rob? I don't know. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Well, I don't have anything to add. I just feel as though like I couldn't do my best because we weren't in like the school and my role wasn't like done to the best of my abilities because of that. So I hope that this year coming forward, we can get back into the school and have a bigger impact on the um, committee. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's harder this year because we're not in school nearly as much, but I hope that like this year will go better than over the summer when we weren't in school. And Sophie, I liked in your letter how you wrote, you wrote some about social media. And I think that that's something that we really should think about. I think um, I, I, for one, was a little bashful about social media as a presence, as a committee. Um, but I think since we've, we've had some experience together, I think we should, you know, think about how to do that. And um, you all may have some real leadership in that um in that area not that only young people know social media but um you all might have a better sense is it is that something you'd like to add to the agenda for next month i'll bring forward something i like that idea let's talk about it again i agree like i to think talk we about should it. explore yeah. it i mean it's such a powerful tool and it's really our only means of connecting and sending messages right now so whether but, it's the school or otherwise throughout the community so I think like education in general is kind of a big thing that should we should maybe have a bigger focus on because I know like for my family personally, my mom's always asking me like, oh, can we recycle this? Can we do this? Like, I think it's just not like ignorance of people that they don't want to. It's just that they don't know how to be mm -hmm. as sustainable. Difficult. Yeah, it's difficult. It's a good point. Okay, well, I'll add that to the agenda for next month and we can talk offline. Uh, I think something. Um, next on, so uh, the pending business trash reduction and increasing the comp compost, composting, composting update. Um, Joe, I don't know if you have any updates on you can share or. Um, sure. Share? So, as far as, so as you all know, the recycling contract went out. To RFP. <clears throat> so the holidays and a little bit of snow we got in December delayed us a little bit more than we wanted to, but um, we're actually lined up to do second interviews with vendors that gave us proposals. Um, we threw a ton at them between the feedback we got from this group, uh, the advisory board of public works, and then some of our own internal, um, you know, asks in that. So we're vetting that out. Uh, composting is included in all of the conversation that we talked about. Um, it's certainly on the table. I don't have a definite answer yet because it's still a little bit fluid. I'm hoping that by the time we meet at the next meeting, I'll have some pretty good news on that front uh, related to that. Um, so I hate to leave that dangling out there as a tease, but I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, I'll be bringing something good in front of the committee the next Great. time we speak. Great, thank you for that. So I'll Sorry. leave it on the agenda. I apologize if that was so gray, but <laughs> I, I don't want to. I don't want to put my foot in my mouth. We get it. Yeah. We get, yep. It's Thank you. Even hope is valuable. Yes, it's a fluid situation, but uh, think, things are going well. So. Oh, great. Okay. Thanks. Rob, um, can I ask a quick question on that? Yeah. Um, Joe, I know when we last, well, we spoke about this a while ago, and you had asked the committee to send you kind of additional thoughts that you wanted to, that if people had things that they wanted included in the RFP when you put it out to bid, yep. um, if there were kind of additional things that um, might get included. And I know one of the things that I really wanted to see was 
whether it be kind of what Melrose does or what I think Melrose does, where they have kind of some special days or some special places where you can drop drop off like the lightweight plastics that we were using when, when we were doing kind of the bench project or the really hard plastics like the deodorant containers and shampoo containers and stuff that's not traditionally uh, recyclable through the stream. Did Is that kind of still in consideration and a part of what you're hoping comes back as part of the proposal or did we not really make progress on that? Uh, no, so all of it is. So we threw in awesome. uh, anything that came on the list that was related to me from Rob made it into the RFP. So I'm just going right off the top of my head. So I might be excluding something, but uh, hard plastics, um, metals, uh, plastic bags, you name it, we included it into it to figure out if there was a way that A, the vendor could process it, but then B, if they are processing it, that they're processing it appropriately, that it's not just ending up, um, you know, headed to the incinerator. Um, some other things that were included in there is a public and a municipal uh, shredding event. I know when the committee put together the big purge, unfortunately it didn't happen, but we had a contractor coming to do some shredding for that. Um, so we threw everything, including the kitchen sink at it. And, you know, some contractors could, or some contractors propose more than others. Um, so, you know, we broke all that down, compared it apples to apples. The next sit down is, you know, the conversation where it says, you know, sharpen your pencils, you know, here's still our priorities that haven't changed show us your hand, you know, what can you bring to the table? Um, the RFP was very education heavy and we're looking for a partner that is going to be a participant with us uh, moving forward. So it's, you know, one of the other pieces of importance that's noted in that. So um, I think we threw a lot at them to digest, but yes, all that was included to give you the short answer on that. Perfect. Thanks. I can't wait to hear what you come back with. Uh, I can't wait to find out where we end up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great, thanks. Um, Julie, you're breaking up. Oh, can you hear me? Can we just better. put the purge on the agenda for next meeting? Sure. I might have a better idea of where we are, and I, I would love to kind of revisit that again. Okay. Okay. Um, so, uh, Julia, Green Communities Act. Um, yeah, when I was, when I was reading the notes, can you hear me? Um, yeah. I don't, I actually don't have an update. I know we're supposed to be forming a working group, um, and I will follow up on that and have a full report next month. Um, the plan is still to take the one, um, I, I guess the one warrant, the one thing we would need passed by town meeting in um, the spring. So I commit to having a full report next time. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, plus, oh, okay, yeah, that's me. Uh, oh, uh, land protection. Um, Mary, do you have any updates? I didn't manage to reach out to you beforehand, uh, sorry. You know, I, I don't have an update. I did a little research and I, I just wanted to maybe have more of an open discussion about where we go with this, because I'm honestly new to all this and you know I think I need a little bit of input and feedback on the direction we take. Um, <clears throat> one, I would say I did find um, a really great document that the town put together that I found particularly helpful to help kind of inform open space and, and recreation. And um, I don't know, maybe the DPW was involved. I'm not sure who actually crafted this but there was a town open space and recreation plan that included an inventory of all town owned land and, and it includes a category of, of how protected that land is. So I found this sort of a nice way, a concise way to kind of look at what land we own as a town, who owns it within the town, so who, who's listed as the owner, so for example, you know, I noticed the DPW is the owner of a, obviously of a lot of the parks um, and, and, but then there's some conservation um, land that's owned by the conservation committee really focused around the wetlands as, as Judy has pointed out in the past. Um, but one thing that I thought was interesting is the town forest um, 
is one of the larger parcels of land. And we talked about this. This is what originally I think piqued the discussion at the environmental committee is, is the surprise that the town forest wasn't that protected or really under protected land. And so this helped me to understand that a little bit better. Um, so I guess we have 45 acres of land, which is um, in some change, um, which obviously contributes since it's mostly forest to our air quality and wildlife preservation. It is listed as owned, as Joe probably is well aware, uh, as by the DPW. Not sure what decides that, you know, I, I have no understanding of how that's discerned, but they're list, it's listed as owned by the DPW. And the protection level that it is listed as is moderate. Um, and, I, and what that means is um, the town, it's still open to exposure. So when you're, they have like a definition of what moderate protection means. And it says the town meeting can approve the sale of the land to a developer. Um, and there may be some short term restrictions granted to the conservation committee, but it remains um, vulnerable to development. That was a little scary to hear. Now, whether that would actually happen if there's a risk of that realistically, I'm not sure. Um, but I just wanted to kind of share that because that's, the, again, that's what originally piqued our interest at a, as a committee in this. Um, and then, you know, just to recap some of the options that um, I discussed with Judy as well as Ann Gagnon from the state. I think she's a land agent going back to my notes here, Northeast District of Mass Division of Wildlife and Fisheries, if I got that right. Um, and she said one simple way to permanently protect it, uh, the land would be to transfer it at town meeting to the care and custody and control of the Wakefield Conservation Commission. Um, this would make it uh, fall under Article 97, which would be harder for the town to develop in the future or for it to be voted to be developed. So I guess that leads, and then the other option is land trust, but I keep going, you know, that's kind of a circular issue because that would require a lot of funding and someone who's willing to start a land trust. And, you know, I, I think that's, my, I'm, you know, also sort of out of my jurisdiction of purview, but it just led me to kind of think about some questions I guess we could all think about and I'd like people to kind of engage in that. And one is, you know, is this even worth pursuing? You know, do we feel like there's a risk here? Um, do we want to pursue this? Would we feel better knowing there's like no long-term risk of this being developed? I, I think there's always a risk, but what level, I guess, is the question. And then um, is there more information that the committee needs? So, you know, for example, you know, Judy, I think Judy's here now, but um, Judy or someone from the conservation committee could more formally come in and speak to this, or Joe, you might have some background on how land is sort of discerned who, who owns it. Like, I'm not sure who the deciding factor of why it landed as owned by DPW and um, what your thoughts are about that. And maybe there's good reason. Um, and then just any other experience maybe that Julie has or others around have there been efforts in the past to protect land in this way by transferring it to the conservation committee? So that's a lot of, I have like more questions and answers, but I did want to just open it up because I'm not sure what the interest level is and is this on our priority list, right? So, so again. So does it sound like we set up a just a, either a subcommittee or a working group and then come back maybe see if Joe or and Julie well, I, only or, if there's interest. I mean, I, yeah, if there's interest in moving forward. There really forward is no working group, you know. So. Right. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, one question I would have also is, does it does it matter who owns owns the land between the town in terms of maintaining it? So, like, I know that town forest, especially those trails that I know the Eagle Scouts built but they are very popular. They, I think they have grown exponentially in popularity in the pandemic. That's, I feel like no one was ever up there and now a lot of people use that. Um, and is that still available if the Conservation Commission owns it as opposed to DPW? I don't know if it takes any maintenance 
um, to keep that sort of publicly accessible. But I feel like we want open spaces and we also want it, I mean, we want it to be protected, but also available, um, I think is an important part of that. So I, I mean, I, I'd be happy to, to help Mary. I don't, I have nothing, no other knowledge to offer, but I definitely am interested in making sure that we have sort of protected open space in our town for the long term. Great, it's good to know. And then I don't, does anyone have a sense of, you know, why one is owned by a certain department in the town? Again, as a resident, I'm not familiar with that process. So how does it land in, you know, how does it get tagged as owned by D DPW? I don't know, Joe, if you know the answer to that. I can give you my best guesstimate. Uh, that's actually probably an excellent question for Tom Mullen. Um, okay. Knowing, knowing though, like, so where the town forest is, uh, I'm going to guess that when that area of land was developed, it was probably very early on in the 1900s and it fell to the, the, the DPW or the town um, sort of by default. So what, you know, the purpose or intent was at the time, I don't know. Did my lights go off? Um, so I think you know if it's if it's a town owned parcel for open space and that's how they were characterizing it back then, uh, we would have inherited that just by you know the nature of what we do every day. Um, I can think of a couple other parcels uh, throughout the years that I'm familiar with that have been voted a town meeting to be turned over to Concom. Um, I couldn't tell you right now. Oh, okay. You know, is there a benefit to them owning it one way or the other? Um, I know any time that we're going to be doing any work where we kind of cross into where their jurisdiction is, uh, we typically have to inquire with them, you know, and depending on the scope of what we're doing, we either need to file a notice of intent or, uh, you know, attend the meeting and get permission. Um, so it'd probably be something that, you know, did a little bit of homework on and then kind of, you know, balance the pros and cons. Um, there could be a, a whole lot of benefit to it, or there could be another means that. Well, my understanding from the state is if it's, if it is, um, let me just reread it. Uh, if it is, if you're looking to permanently protect uh, any parcel of land, but I had asked specifically about this, um, the town, uh, we would have to transfer it at town meeting to the care and custody and control of the Wakefield Conservation Commission. And that would make it Article 97 land, is what she had said, um, which makes it much harder for there's many more restrictions on it. So we know definitively that there is more protection and it becomes in a high protection class as opposed to a moderate. Now it could still potentially, you know, there's still a way for it to be developed, but I guess it's a lot more challenging, so. I think um, for, at least from my perspective, one of the questions that I would probably wanna to ask Tom is, could you achieve the same thing uh, potentially through a bylaw and, you know, provide some protections that way um, where maybe, you know, if you have a piece of land that is owned by the town or taken by the town and tax title, that there's a checks and balances process to maybe ensure that it's protected first. Um, that's a, it's a great topic though. I'd love to pick his brain on it. Yeah, I just, I was looking at like the assessors, I was trying to like figure this out, which it's messy. And it's like, uh, the, it to me, you know, layman's, it didn't seem like there was necessarily rhyme or reason to certain land parcels being owned by certain, you know, clearly there's some, some rational logic to like the parks. Right. You, you know, you'd be managing those heavily, that makes sense. But I think it does make a difference on protection level um you know so think, where there's I a think, world is a way i think sure i could think too like uh the, the town forest area in the area of oak street um that was probably easily defaulted to us because of the way the terrain is uh there would have been you know some challenges with you know developing that you know especially close to 100 years ago so to default to us by default maybe, yeah uh, maybe not you know if I had a time machine, I'd go back and get you the answer tonight. Um, yeah, no, I get it. Okay. I, I can tell you, though, the open space plan I know was done by, uh, I believe it was a collaborative effort between the Planning Board, Conservation, and MAPC. Um, I do not know if the former town planner, Paul Rebus, was involved in that. I'm going to guess that he probably was. He was. 
yeah but it it, it preceded my my time in, in any role of authority here it was really helpful because i initially i found myself looking at the assessor's maps and you know yeah, that yeah. was very difficult <laughs> if, but you the, want, if you want a list of um Oh, you froze. The inventory in that list isn't up to date. That's the only problem because it, the plan hasn't been updated. Okay, that's good. Um, but chapter 97 also requires um, approval through the state legislature. So it's not simply going to town meeting. So it's a longer, more complicated process. And that's why it's a stronger protection. But the area that's really the crux of town forest is tax title land. And that's the area that's with the trails that are closest to the fields at Maple Way. Okay. So they, when you look at the maps, it's a broad area that's called the town forest, but it's kind of, it's more of like a sweeping cover of a name. Yeah. But the main area that's not protected is the tax title land. Okay, thank you. And I can think of a big picture when you say, are we interested in this? I, I think there's two things coming up that this really segues well with. One is just the whole discussion around resilience and municipal, you know, the municipal vulnerability planning. And now we have a whole framework in town, which um, the department heads are just kind of retrained on in the last few weeks on, you know, when we make a decision, let's think about it also from a resilience standpoint. So I think that's an argument to be made. The other thing is that um, the town is starting I think this month a visioning process where there's there's a committee set up, but there's also going to be a lot of um, community input solicited. And I and I kind of tend to think a lot of the discussion is going to happen around development as part of this visioning. And so I could see a, a way where you know if if we as individuals or as the committee say you know we feel strongly that there is some our vision of Wakefield is that there are maintained open spaces. How do we best do that? And I think if we could interject that into the visioning document, it would give us a few more legs. Yeah, that's great to know. Uh, I mean, I think this is intrinsically linked with our health too, like asthma rates, and there's a ton of studies on, um, you know, how that correlates as well as just the, the value of homes. So there's a number of reasons why I think we need to keep this as a main factor in the conversation that we have as the, you know, when we're planning. And there's only so much we can control. Can't control people's private lands, but, um, and this is, sorry, Rob, I'm taking up so much time. This is, I just feel stuck on this and I'm not really sure where to take it. So um, the other thing that comes to mind too on the air quality is the, the tree fund. Maybe next time we can get an update on, I know that happened maybe a year or plus, it seemed maybe, three years ago, it seems like forever ago now, this is like the longest year in history, but um, that was a, one of the strategies I think that ended up coming out of um, some of the conversations ancillarily around, you know, how do we keep that going? And has that been successful? Did it make an impact? Did it not? And if not, is there another way to approach it? Okay, I can That's get that. I'll shut up. No, thank you. I'll, um, yeah, I'll, I'll see if I can get the information for the trees on how many's planted. I can give you that right now if you want. Oh, there you go. Thank you, Joe. 114. So that's not, that's that's not, that's not including um, some of the wire friendly trees uh, planted by the gap. Is, like, is that gross or net? Because we lost a lot of trees too. Uh, so if you, if you factor in uh, what happened in August, we're probably down. We probably lost about 25 more than what we planted now. But, you know, we probably would have hit more. But, you know, the whole month of August, a good portion of the month of September, we were still cleaning up storm damage, which cut into some of the, you know, sweet spot of planting time. Um, you know, by that time, some of the nurseries had, had thinned out kind of what they had available. So, but we'll be headed right back out into it in the spring once the weather cooperates to hit some more. Great. Um, do you know whether the trees were replanted over on Sylvan Ave where they were cut and the person was fined? Um, I know that the person uh, that you know, ran into the trouble up there paid to clear up what they had to clear up and they had uh, a company come in to restore that. 
I'll get you a definitive answer from Dennis though. I'm I'm almost positive that 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 is that issue's been put to bed, but I'll definitely find out. Thanks. Thanks. Um, so just next steps on the land protection. Do we do we want to continue leaving it on as a discussion and just maybe speak to Tom Mullen and, and come back to people? Would like people to see more done on this or? Yes, I, I would personally. Yeah, okay. Right. Do, we, do, yes, we need to, do you want to invite Tom Mullen to the next meeting or do you want to have an offline discussion with him or what 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 would be uh, the best approach you think? Um, I was thinking maybe we could keep it offline and then bring it back just with the re like the recommendations for the, if we're talking about the forest or, or right. unless yeah, anybody else has an idea and everybody would like to be involved. Um, Good. <laughs> hold on. Julia, so, you're mute. Let's, yeah, let's go through the whole agenda and then maybe at the end kind of think about it. It's not a bad idea to kind of have meeting have maybe one guest or we'll kind of focus on one thing maybe but see what else we have on our agenda thank you yeah okay yeah um all right i'll move on then um the plastic bag collection so i have the forms to fill out to, for the benches and i i i just need to speak to to joe just to help me fill them out so i just haven't done that yet um and we just need to pick a color and then just ask for a um, to accept the donation for the town council. So I'll try and get that done for next month. And can we publicly announce that? I mean, this is one of those things where like, I think it's a, a nice feel good thing. Yes. Um, yeah, we could so do something with it. I don't know if we it. can put it on our website or and just oh, an idea. Yep. Yep, and people could... loved it. I mean, when it when those buckets went away, I'm sure Joe know, knows more than anyone. People were so sad when they went away because it had a huge yeah. Fall. I'm I don't know if, how many Joe got. I got five there. emails yeah. asking, where have they gone? When are they coming back? What do I do I, now? I'm holding out for another option to get rid of all my plastic Sorry. bags. So just a reminder, Home Depot will take them, which, and I've done that. They have a, you walk in and it's immediately on your left next to the bulbs. From my experience, that bin was overflowing. And I, so I asked the guy, what do I do? So he handed me a paper bag to stuff my loose plastic bags in because he didn't know how to um, dump it. But he in didn't the interim, that's good, but that takes extra work, which means that most people are going to just throw theirs out. You know? Well, the drive to the oh, town hurts. hall isn't any different than Home Depot, for me at least. Yeah, I for you, they... but I think the, the masses need to be spoon-fed convenience yep. to recycle. Right. I'm well, going to do it though. I didn't, I didn't know. Actually, I, I, I thought we were waiting to see if just regular people could do that. Um, so it's good to know that. Um, I think Shaw's is collecting again too. Shaw's, Target, Home Depot, Coles. There's, I mean, there's Trex a few. Just goes, Trex goes there and gets them basically. Yeah. And we can actually re-enter the challenge again in the summer if we want to. Oh, really? That's good. So, so okay. I think uh, getting back to Sophie's idea of you know, getting better at social media. I think there are a number of people who did go out of their way to drive up to town hall and drop those off. And if they knew that they could do the same thing at Shaw's or if, at Target, because people go to Target all the time, or even Home Depot to list that out so that people keep that in mind. And then also let people know that we're hoping to get into the program again in the summer. I know I'm just stacking mine up in, in bags downstairs in my basement until I could find a place to, to take them. So, um, I think I think we should communicate that, and, and then, like yeah. you said, Mary, like let's make sure that we're making some noise about the fact that the benches are coming. Uh, Rob, I they I thought that they were going to be going to the schools. Is that not true? But, yeah, we can put them at the schools. I just um, I just need Joe to take delivery of them, and I just need to confirm the colors. And yeah, the that's the intent, though, right? I think oh, yeah, the intent yeah. is going to the they're dedicated school. to the elementary yeah. school. Right. Okay. Because yeah. when you said that the town council had to accept the donation, oh. I wasn't. I wasn't sure if the schools actually had to. Um... Oh, actually, you might be right. It might be the school committee that could that accepts oh. it. You may yeah. be right. Yeah. If it's going to the school, I suspect that we have to. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. There's a value to them. Of I think they're three hundred bucks each, so we have to. Yeah. 
the t somebody somebody in one of our official entities i was gonna say somebody has to approve it and and right, uh, right and put it through well, so the school's land is officially owned by the dpw so, joe <laughs> is that on you yeah i'll i'll agree to take them rob you and i can uh catch up offline yeah just ship them okay. to us and then when the weather cooperates i'll work with bob or you know whoever on the school side and we'll get them in the ground okay so great you can deal with what colors they are <laughs> yeah maybe just to add to what um susie was saying maybe when you announce like socially or however we do this that yay we got these benches for the schools you say and in the interim you can send your plastic bags too so it's kind of like an and statements because mm -hmm. that's the natural next question oh it ended where am i going to take my bag that's great but where am i going to take my bags right so then you could just naturally answer that question so i did do some information about that early in december i think when we closed it down on facebook but i'll follow up and check that they actually made it on and then i would um, put that i would get that into a rotation that that's showing up weekly because i know i, I never saw it and mcdonald to do that yeah if, yeah if I'll jen could just get it into like a, a regular post okay and the, yeah because i think from what i understand joe is that right they're working on you're working on a dashboard as well for some of this stuff is that yeah. the dashboard is for that yep that, that'll be included um you know, but in the overall media presence of the town, there are a couple other things. So seasonally, um, hindsight being 2020, I could add it into our uh, newsletters that go out in water bills and things like that. Um, but the, me the media presence will be the probably the big one. Okay. I default to Jen on that, where that's kind of her. Yeah. Certainly beef that up. Okay. It is true. Like now, at least, like our muscle, we're used to doing it. That I can't even stand throwing them away. I just pile them up. Okay, I'll, I'll all talk the to shipping material. You know, all those. Yeah. Which, yeah. which, while we're on plastic bags, can I just say Shaw's is still using super thick plastic bags, which is they're fully compliant with the current bylaw. Um, but I. I talked to Steve today, and I think you know we do at, at, like Melissa and and Carol said earlier. You know starting to do outreach to the businesses and um we, we really need to work with steve to kind of make a visit to shaw's and say this is coming we'd really like you to use up your inventory and then maybe be a leader kind of do it voluntarily so i'm hoping if anybody wants to kind of help have that conversation um we need to formalize it i said i would talk to you guys tonight and then um you know we we, we need to be more systematic about getting to the business is there any on, along those lines? Is there any way we can help the the restaurants and other businesses cause uh, to an, somehow encourage or do like a group discount or by working with I don't know, like you know if if they buy in bulk, obviously it's going to be less cost per. But we have all these little individual restaurants that are struggling. Yeah. And during COVID, there there's tons of different containers. There's got to be a way to have like a group cooperative around purchasing sustainable products where we can make make it a little easier to make that choice. Is there a small group that wants to work on that? I, I would be happy to work on it. And maybe, and it doesn't just have to be members, like maybe Melissa or others would be interested too. Because then we could meet and really, I, I think we could sit down again with the chamber or some others and figure out what it would take from an information and maybe from a cost standpoint too. And some of that. Well, yeah, I'd like to be involved in that one. Okay. Some of the business leaders that you know are already leading in the sustainability, and you know, because they've figured out some of it, and uh, I would think that they have insight, you know, both on you know where to procure and, and that type of stuff. Um, so and what about the new? Um, position in town that's like the commerce yeah, our area. economic development Erin I think we should sit down with her I think we should sit down with the chamber Listen. you know I'd like to I, I'd be happy to help I'm just not sure if I'm a subject matter expert you know again in that area just you know I maybe have just ideas it's, because we don't, really, we don't want to have to let maybe just Susie and I for right now let us start to look into it and we'll work with Melissa and the town and then um it's not really a subcommittee. It's just kind of a working group. And then we'll, we'll share the information 
and, and see whether there's like different assignments we can give people too to, to work on it where we're yeah. not deliberating. Okay. Uh, great, thank you. that sounds great. Okay. Um, I have Safe Streets Group in. I, don't, I didn't know if they'd met. Yeah, um, last meeting. I can give an update on that. They've been really busy. Um, they're a great group. They, um, they signed on to the Safe Routes to Schools program, which every school in Wakefield is already a member of. It's a state program. They have different um, events and whatnot. And so the Safe Streets Working Group signed on as an alliance to that. Um, and actually the head of Safe Street Safe Route School is gonna come and do a walking audit from Galvin to Dolbear to see how the sidewalks in our between, because there's a lot of complaints obviously about the high school, but the high school is not included in Safe Routes to School. So they're gonna kind of walk from Dolbear. I will send that information around. I think we're gonna have two audits where this person's gonna walk with us and then they help us map out kind of you know, what we need to do to fix or, you know, kind of meeting groups and things like that. It's really, really interesting. So I will send that information around. I know they're going to do one kind of with the youth council and one with community members, and we can all just walk and, and do that. Um, they're meeting the last um, Tuesday, Tuesday of every month. So their next meeting is um, just is the 26th. Um, and um, Brian McCubrey is one of the co-chairs and he's really good. It's already up on the community group and there'll be a press release on it in next week's newspaper with other things. The other thing they did is they have submitted very detailed um, comments to the VHB for the um, downtown revitalization in Vision Wakefield, um, including comments on how to make it more bike and walker friendly. So they've taken a lot of time to dig into the to the designs and are putting things together. We submitted that today to um, Steve and, and Bill Re uh, Renault and Ed Dombrowski and they're gonna put it in, you know, they're gonna consider it for the 25% design phase. So that's a great group. If anybody's interested in getting involved, um, the next meeting they'll actually be setting up subcommittees. So if you want more work, um, they're gonna try to set up subcommittees and that's not a public group. So you know, they, they kind of don't have the open meeting issues that everybody else has. And they're doing a ton of um, things with others. So the Mel they're attending Melrose meetings and Malden and um, the, um, our state legislative delegation is holding a meeting next week on the Greenway. So connecting all the towns together through the rail to trail. So they're participating on that too. Well, they're busy. Well, thanks. Um, oh, moving down, the, uh, updates. Um, Student liaison members. Addie, would you like to, do you have anything else you'd like to add or talk about? I don't know. Um, like I said before, there's really not much going on and we don't really have any time for like recycling club and stuff. So yeah, there's really not anything okay. happening at the school. No, okay, thanks. Um, oh, uh, Susie. Do you have any updates you want to share? So not, not really other than we're entering budget season. And so if there is anything that we as a committee feel like needs kind of consideration, now would be the time to start bringing it forward. I can tell you that budget, the budget discussions aren't going to be easy, um, right? We're, we're, over budget right now. So we're, you know, we're kind of in a, in a tough situation for the current year. Um, you know, we have some, actually Doug is still working on kind of what his proposal and what his, his ask is. He's meeting with all the different schools and trying to get that together. Um, so we have not yet seen any kind of proposal. Um, certainly that when they, when it does come forward and I don't think it's on the agenda for the, for the next meeting, but it might be the first meeting in February. Um, when Bob from facilities presents, I will certainly make sure that there's at least some discussion around the um, kind of the the implication of the town meeting vote on schools around styrofoam and um, the plastic silverware. Um, you know, certainly we were we're making great 
progress with those conversations with Danielle and until COVID hit. Um, and, and I know I've shared in this meeting in the past that I had heard from my son at the Galvin that they were kind of moving to the boats and there were, there was no more styrofoam. Um, I don't know how widely that has changed. Um, and the, actually, now that I think about it, the Galvin is the only place where they're actually serving lunch. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, I, I don't, I just don't know if, um, if at the moment, anybody's thinking about this and the fact that that's coming their way for September. Um, and cause it would need to be in next year's budget if there's a, you know, a cost implication of the, of the, the change. So I will, I'm also on the, um, the budget and um, finance subcommittee. And so maybe what I'll do at, um, is bring that up at the next subcommittee meeting and try and get it out in front of the actual budgeting process. Um, but I don't think there's anything else kind of from, from the committee's perspective. I, I don't think we can have any conversations about kind of increasing recycling. Um, you know, Joe, I, I, I don't know if part of what the negotiations that you're going through right now is going to increase kind of coverage at the schools and some of the conversations that we were having with Andy Bray or not. Um, but if there's any budget implications, it would be good to know that. And so I would, I'd just ask that you could reach out to me separately because I've actually got to jump, jump off this call. Um, but reach out to me separately if there's anything that I should be considering and I will make sure that I get it into next week's um, subcommittee meeting. Okay, great, thanks. Yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I have a couple of things. So I'll, I'll reach out to you. Okay, sounds right. good. I'm great. gonna drop off. Sorry that I can't stay. Sorry guys. No problem. No, thank you. Thanks. Bye-bye. Right. Um, uh, uh, Julie, uh, town council. Do I don't have a lot other than to echo what Susie said. We're in budget season, and I know Joe's thinking about it from his standpoint. Um, I, I don't believe – I'm going to go back and look at green communities and make sure there's no extra costs there. I don't believe there are. But if there are other things that you think, you know, we've been talking about that um, – you know, may need a budget line item. That's something we can think about. Um, I, I do know that the town is looking at maybe trying to get some funding to do a, a townwide bike um, report survey, kind of thinking about that holistically. Um, they may be using state money for that. Um, I think I think that's that's all I have. Um, Tom, do you have anything from? Municipal guess on. Um, yeah, just uh, two things uh, bring awareness um, that our legislation um, with a strong bipartisan pass um, the climate action bill, uh, the S2995 uh, bill, which is on Governor Baker's desk. Uh, he um, believe he needs to sign it by tomorrow. Um, today. Or it, today, is it today? Um, I think it's midnight tonight. Yeah. So it was call to action to reach out to him um, requesting that he sign that bill. Um, so it's a, you know, net zero by 2050. Uh, there's a lot of good things in there for, for the munis. Um, but if he hasn't signed out, I'm afraid that no. it'll probably be a pocket veto. Um, but our legislators have um, said that they'll go to task and get it back to him um, when the session is put back in. But it's unfortunate that it isn't gonna be signed. Uh, the other thing, um, we as a board are starting to look at uh, a community solar program. Uh, we've budgeted some money for this upcoming year. We're gonna be looking for input from, you know, um, residents and uh, here in town around um, what they, would like to see uh, that um, community solar program look like. So we're kind of batting around different ideas. You know, it could be just as simply as the the utility owns it, and you know we all collectively benefit from it as all you know all rate payers, or more of a you know kind of um, co-op where folks can um, buy into it. You know, uh, whether it's on a per kilowatt basis or different types of stuff. So we'll be looking for feedback and input on that. Um, just 14 minutes ago, the governor vetoed the bill. Oh, <laughs> So he didn't wait to pocket veto, he flat out vetoed it. Oh. That's unfortunate. 
but but the um the committee is saying they're going to resubmit it to him in its entirety and that time they'll override it they just can't override it right now because the yeah. session's ended that session ended so they have to i th i think it'll still pass with an override. awesome questions or anything for me uh, Tom, at the end of last year, you had mentioned that there was open um, rebates available. There were some credits that hadn't been scooped up, and the town considered adding PV to another water department building or something like that. Did any? Did you? Was it all used up? Or um... I don't know. Um, I haven't got a final report on. Um, all the status of the applications. I know that more, you know, uh, app, you know, private resident applications. I'm not aware of any other town solar project that went forward. Um, I don't, I'm not aware of anything. Joe, you didn't um, go forward with anything else on any of the buildings, did you? Uh, uh, not yet, but okay. uh, I'll let you finish and then I'll, I'll update you on that. All right, yeah, so the, you know, um, the current, Solar rebate program closed, you know, from um, the Department of Energy on the 31st of December. You know, as long as those applications got in, were approved, um, folks would be able to, you know, take the the year to build um, and still get their uh, credit. Um, you know, we as a board are also going to, you know, start to explore, you know, what do we do next? Um, you know, whether that's uh, something, you know, hope, we're hoping that another program from the Department of Energy comes out, you know, there would have been potentially stuff in the, you know, that uh, the S2995 bill as well that, you know, potentially opened the door for other uh, sorts of programs. So just stay, stay tuned. Thanks. Over to you, Joe. Go on, Joe. Any uh, updates? Um, so just to kind of echo uh, what Julie had mentioned earlier, uh, our engineering group did get in touch with MAPC to help us with the town-wide bicycle master plan. Uh, it sounds like what we're trying to align might fit in with some of the things they're doing and uh, that could be something that you could be seeing happening in the near future. Um, I certainly hope so because it'll help kind of make things easier for us in road construction and planning that in and we'll finally have a document that says you know where people are trying to get to and you know biking most frequently. And if not, you know, where are some of the areas that may not be overwhelmingly apparent to us as we think about our work, but you know, are impacting the cyclists every day. Um, Albion Street, you'll see uh, construction starting on that pretty soon. We're going to do a walkthrough with the contractor and then we're going to get going, try to get that done before the good weather comes in. Uh, I touch base on the recycling really quick. And the other thing, uh, I've actually talked to Dave over at the light plant and I have to vet out um, some of the compatibility between the electric pumps in our pumping station, but I intend to plan for in my budget a capital project to do a second building at the water department this year. So the treatment plant that we have, uh, the two biggest you know, commodities it consumes is disinfectants and electricity. Um, if I can put a project on the roof that limits the amount of electricity I consume, then I've essentially taken some of my costs and reduced them. So um, Blue Cell Solar has been out, they've looked at the building. Um, I had to have a water consultant just verify that some of the vents weren't gonna cause anything, you know, with the photovoltaic uh, panels, just because of, the, you know, the nature of what happens in that building. But it sounds like, you know, at some point in time, uh, either this spring or early summer, that we'll be looking at a phase two. Nice. Oh, that's great. Thanks for that, John. Um, uh, Clean Lake Committee, we haven't we haven't met, so I don't have any updates on that. Um, so, so. Uh, I'm just going to jump. Well, on so item five, I just put these in the wrong order. Next meeting is February February eleventh, and then uh, meeting um, item six matters not anticipated by agenda. So I just I have a cup. Uh, I had an email from Robin, and, and I didn't add some of it to the agenda. So I'm just going to. Um, Robin had some suggestions. 
that I'd like to share. I thought they were they were a great idea. Um, sorry. To... So we were talking about having some committees for the land project protection, and we were talking about inviting Tom in, Tom Mullen. We also have suggestion of the uh, getting someone from the permanent building committee, and the and the public safety building as the as the, as the projects are moving forward. Did you want to talk about that, Robin, a little bit more of what you're thinking on that? Well, I w so it was kind of two things for the for the public safety building for us to have a dialogue with the folks doing it to make sure they're doing everything they can, you know, being proactive sustainability wise, because we don't necessarily have anything in writing or maybe there is of some goals, but, you know, see what they're doing to move forward our you know, interests and then uh, the permanent building committee um, in general, you know, so we, we aren't represented there, you know, again, to see if there's ways that we can talk to them about how they hire architects and engineers and how they evaluate projects to have some sustainability goals. And I'm sure the, the practice that the town now has to do the resiliency may encourage that, but um, the people on the committee aren't, you know, town employees so as a way to have that committee maybe have a community you know create a communication uh dialogue with them and what's kind of spurred the idea is the high school project you know so as soon as we can to get them thinking the more effective it'll be to have a project that meets our goals and that starts even now because they're about to select an opm and what's effective is if if the proposal to seek an opm an owner's project manager list goals, they will start the dialogue and the expectation that there's goals are to be met. Um, so if you add it afterwards, it's not as effective. It may not even be contractual for someone to meet a goal that's above, you know, state regulations. So, you know, an example from, you know, the work that my office does, um, the city of Brookline, you know, they have rules about fossil fuel free that rules are in place, but in addition to every proposal we saw an advertisement said, we want the applicants to explain their experience with fossil free buildings. And so by putting in writing right in the beginning, it didn't say they wouldn't consider a firm that doesn't have the experience, but it's making teams form with the experience, expertise, understanding that that is an interest. And that's just an example of, you know, what Brookline's interests are, but if we have interests, of anything, you know, getting it in writing and, you know, set that as goals, I thought would be beneficial. Yes. So you're thinking we'd, we'd invite them to our meeting or would we go to their meeting or we'll try and get on their agenda? Don't know. Um, yeah. All right. And Robin, you're a perfect liaison for this because you understand both sides of it. I might suggest that you reach out I mean, if you don't mind, or maybe, you know, Rob or somebody, and I think, I think Joe Bertrand is the um, chair and just kind of have a conversation, like just what you just told us, you know, and I think we're behind you to say, we really kind of want to be thinking this through. Joe was on that resilience training, which I'm going to try to find the video to send to everybody. Um, so definitely, I know he's aware of that and, and maybe just have an offline, the two of you and find, you know, figure out whether it's a special meeting that we hold um you know outside of our regular meetings um yeah i i, I think you, yeah. you you speak their language i think you're going to be as convincing so on, on that note what would be the feasibility you know um to have this body have a liaise um out to the permanent building committee like this body has liaisons from town council the gas and light you know um invite and, ourselves <laughs> Yeah, you know, and not to, you know, necessarily nominate Robin, but, you know, if, if Robin was to to be the liaise to the permanent building committee, you know, we would always kind of have a voice and just, you know, awareness of what's going on is that, you know, I, I don't know what would be the feasibility of doing that and then how would we go about um, doing that if that's something we want to pursue. I don't know. I would, I would keep that as, an, as something that, you know, we can talk to them about. And you can always you can always informally be kind of a liaison too. Um, yeah, I mean, advocate for 
the principles that we've established and then you can expound upon that from a building perspective, which I'm sure is much more detailed in terms of building sustainably, right? So we're saying that maybe me and Robin could just reach out to them and see what which what would be yeah. the best path forward to. I live um, with one of the members too. I'll mention it to my husband. <laughs> I was aware of that, Julie, oh, but I wasn't going to say <laughs> that. I, so I will bring it up with him. Yeah. But I'm not sure he's in leadership there. He's a newbie. I know that we talked a lot about this with the um, vulnerability project too. And like, um, yeah. it, it just seems like this was this was one of our goals to make that building not just a high school, but also something sustainable, a potentially a shelter. Yep. You know, I, so if that's not, if there's not a voice at the table that represents those things, I feel like we have a major gap in, in sort of the goals that. And, and I think it's another thing that I'm hoping will come up envisioning as well, you know, any new buildings that we invest in, and obviously, you know, the high school is an important one that, you know, our vision is that it'll at least be considered strong. And I would add a, as a third project that's going to influence the town is the DPW building or whatever yeah. it form it is, because I'm sure it uses a lot of utilities. <laughs> and we know from some issues right now, there's, you know, there's bad soils and stuff like that. So, you know, having that, you know, focus on long-term health benefits and how they look at the building and you know planning and so forth sorry no joe i didn't pressure, mean to throw joe, the building under the bus oh, yeah no pressure but you're going to be the model for yeah. <laughs> well, I think that building the water department is already a good start right I, mean, I have the potential of a very big garage roof that faces due south i'll just leave it at that. <laughs> i like it yep. and garages don't tend to have a lot of pipes and equipment on top of it so nope probably just a couple of frames that you rob yeah sorry hang on <laughs> <laughs> i was like wait <laughs> make sure everything's okay first i do fine. and i know robin's ideas i mean i love the idea of, of kind of maybe like having people come and reaching out more um you also had an idea about maybe expanding our membership, um, which I, I think is a, is a good idea. I mean, we have four citizen members, we have four kind of liaison type members. Um, you know, may, maybe there's an opportunity. So I think we should, we should talk about that. And then I'm happy to kind of go back and see what that process would be. I mean, we're, we're not like a charter committee. So I think we have some flexibility as long as we can make a case to the town council. And my thought about that was, you know, there's four of us that are public and then the rest are liaisons, which means they have already a huge commitment. So amongst the four of us who have maybe less commitment aside from whatever else is your life, it is a little limited. We also got great PR through the whole bylaws. And I think we got exposures of people who may be interested in, you know, Melissa and Carol join us all the time. And we've had some other, you know, public people pop in. So, you know, our terms end in, I don't know, a, a year or two, but before then, you know, having someone come in so then, you know, we can be more, you know, opportunity. I don't know, just a thought. Yeah, I agree. Other perspectives and more bandwidth. You know, I think there's a lot of, there's a lot of different topics um, that span the environment and it's, it's hard to really prioritize them with only a few of us. So that's, you know, often what I think about too. So I, I agree that we should pursue yeah. looking into that. And I think when we come out of COVID, we'll be more kind of event oriented, a little more like HRC is. And if we do more social media, we're going to need more people. That They expanded at about this time in their evolution as well. And I think with the, you know, everything that we touch upon, there is a wide breadth of things that, you know, certain people are different subject matter experts on the different components, you know, the, there, there's building, there's energy, there's environmental, you know, um, there's businesses from procurement, you know, uh, around sustainable 
uh, pla- you know, wares and stuff. So there's just so many different components and facets that, you know, having more folks and more people that potentially, you know, have a subject matter expert in those potential focus areas. So, uh, Julie, is that something that we talk to Steve about? Yeah, let me talk do we to go to town Let council? me look at some of the other committees on how it's been done. I mean, what do you think a good number would be? It would definitely be in the citizens kind of realm or public realm. Well, we're four right now, so. Uh, uh, I have, so one thing I was I, thinking of is, so right now, because the four of us started all at the same time, that means in theory mm-hmm. we expire all at the same time. So it may benefit if we have a little bit of a stagger. So maybe if we could add two people this year and then plan to grow another two and another. So, or have some people's terms be offset as a way. I don't yeah. know. It's just, I was, you know, I don't know our future in terms of turnover, but I'm just, you know, in case, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's yeah. always good to stagger the terms um, by at least, you know, I don't, what are we, three years? So, yeah, I don't know, at least, I guess a you know a year staggered at least. Yeah, yeah I like that. Bring in another two folks, you know, that have a three-year term, and you know there'd be a year overlap with another two, and you would have con- continuity, right? And this is the time to talk about it because all everybody turns over in April, so we could just add our two to kind of the whole list that's out right now. Let me let me see if I can um get that uh, you know. See what we need to do to do that. I'm not quite sure what the process is. Okay, thank. You. I'll, I'll put that on. Yeah, so I'll I'll add that as a for the agenda for for next month then, and okay. uh, we'll come back with a proposal. Yeah, because it will be our second year in April, right? Yeah, because we end at 20, 2022. So yeah, so we'll we'll start moving on that. Okay, and um. Was there anything else anybody else wanted to bring up or add to the agenda? Well, the other thing that I've been thinking about and taking notes about is um, doing like, kids have the worst possible timing, um, <laughs> doing some kind of a like, you know, we've sort of talked about this a number of times, sort of about public communication. And so um, I think I failed to, to write a, like a, some kind of um, letter to the editor or something after town meeting, but I think we should do it soon. So. I've been taking some notes around what I hear us saying are potentially our priorities for the coming year. Um, and it might be an opportunity also to get some other ideas or sort of solicit other ideas from the community. Um, and so I'm gonna maybe draft that up and send it to you, Rob and Julie or Mayor, I don't know if anybody wants to look at it. Um, but I feel like we should just get some letters and some, you know, I'm, I'm learning how, uh, how eager the item is to um, partner with people on content. And so I think um, maybe we could use that forum also to just, uh, you know, get get some more attention and some a little bit more conversation started about some of these things. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll add it. And yeah, happy That's to talk to you about idea. that. That's a great idea. I think I could use some this kind of content. Sorry, can you hear that? It's okay, don't worry. I, I think, you know, I think we're good. We, I think, we've got a lot done. Yeah. Um, I, I think that was all my notes. Yeah. So, did anybody else have anything? I, I'll take a motion to adjourn then. And thanks everyone for coming. So moved. Second. Um, so, uh, Tom? Aye. Me? Aye. Uh, Julie? Yes. Mary? Yes. Robin. Hi. Uh, Joe. Hi. And Myra. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Have a great night, guys. Thank you, Mary. Bye. Bye.